Hello, I am Ruth Faye, and this is a recorded version of my presentation at the AATSP on July 8th, 2016. Taking project-based learning to a new level, meet the Sweetwater High School Monarch Rescue Team. So this was an international project. It centered around rescuing the migrating monarch butterfly. This migration included Canada, the United States, and Mexico, so I would call it an international rather than a global project. Project goals were to help rescue the migrating monarch butterfly from extinction. Unfortunately, the monarch butterfly population decreased by up to 80-90% in 2013, though it made a slight comeback last year. To create a cross-curricular project, Spanish, English, Greenhouse, Mathematics, Science, and Geography. To create awareness in the students that their actions can have a direct and significant impact on their environment. So at my school, as soon as uh, the semester started, I began Monarch Mondays. So on most Mondays, students would study the monarch butterfly with activities in both Spanish and English. So this project actually ran to the middle of November. On day one, we watched two Richard Lund YouTube videos about monarch migration patterns and finding monarch eggs on milkweed plants, just to spark the students' interest about monarch butterflies. And also we drew a monarch on a template. On day two, we joined the Journey North app, so the students would be able to report their monarch butterfly sightings as they came through the state of Tennessee. Also, we joined the Symbolic Monarch Migration Project, and I'm going to discuss that some more in a second. So our first reported sighting on uh, August 25th, 2015 was reported by my student Megan Baird as she saw a monarch flying through her yard. So we joined the symbolic migration. Um, these packets are available online and contain specific instructions on what to do. Basically, what the teacher does is you sign up and you have your students create a class butterfly and a cluster of smaller butterflies and you will mail these to Journey North, who passes these envelopes on to Mexico. And they actually get sent to the Monarch Reserve, where the uh, monarchs rest for the winter time. And uh, the school children will review the monarchs and then send them back. So our chosen class monarch butterfly is depicted right here with items typical to Tennessee. So there is a Smoky Mountains and the black bear and the mockingbird. And you see the three stars from the Tennessee state flag and the T for University of Tennessee and a wildcat paw. So we sent in our monarch in the cluster of smaller monarchs. Um, and uh, as you can see on this interactive map, these are all schools that participated in this project. So one can actually click on uh, your own class butterfly and it would appear with the basic information. They also take pictures of the class butterflies and post them on their website. So we were able to locate ours. So here's a picture of a class in Michoacan that received class butterflies. And we were able to locate our very own uh, class butterfly that had made it all the way to Mexico. So it was very cute. In May, we received one back from a participating school. And they uh, it was from a middle school and they sent a little message along with their class butterfly. So if you would like to, you can download the teacher packet. And uh, it gives you, as I said, specific instructions on how to participate in this very worthwhile project. 
So another activity we participated in was to plant a wildflower garden that would attract the monarch butterflies as they came through the state of Tennessee. Our greenhouse teacher planted and created a wildflower garden with his class and they used seed provided by the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency. They started sprouting in November um, and uh, as you can see there are quite a few wildflowers coming up. So um, remember I told you that on uh, the first Monarch Monday we had watched some Richard Lund YouTube videos and we were actually able via the comment box on YouTube to contact Richard Lund and he was willing to speak to my second period class about monarchs. So my students wanted to know why they even monarch, why the monarchs even migrate to uh, Mexico, which is not as obvious as one might think. If you think, well, they go south for the winter, well, in uh, Michoacan, Mexico, actually, they do have snowstorms, as you can see in the picture on the bottom left. And this uh, latest snowstorm actually left millions of these poor butterflies dead. So we wanted to know, and nobody really has an answer for that. So can monarchs even uh, catch diseases? And to our horror, they do catch diseases. And he, we, they wanted to know, what, what do you do? Uh, how do you get rid of the sick ones? And uh, he told us he actually puts them in the freezer and then gets rid of them like that. And uh, how long does it take for caterpillars to change to a chrysalis? And they had lots and lots of questions and I was very proud of my students. He also provided us with some good standards that uh, we were able to post on my board on my Monarch Mondays. So in my class we like to play Kahoot games, so I was able to create some Monarch Butterfly Kahoot games for my class to play with the knowledge they had gained from our studying of the topic. On Monarch Monday number three we Listen to Naomi and her dad pronounce monarch vocabulary. Um, this is also available on the Journey North site and they provide you with a vocabulary list and um, the students could learn these words related to, uh, related to monarch butterflies, which I also made into another Kahoot game. So then I wanted to know how they felt about the Monarch Mondays and I asked them how they felt about this and uh, if they believed that planting milkweed would actually make a difference and did they think that rescuing the migrating monarch was even a valuable project. So the results were in and uh, most of my students thought it was a valuable project and uh, they thought it would make a difference and that it would be a valuable project. So then we thought we should try to raise some uh, monarchs in our classroom and we actually ordered a kit and so we tried to prepare a home for the monarchs and it took quite a while for them to arrive and when they did, they were so small, they looked like ants. So then the hunt was on for the real milkweed because what we thought was milkweed they did not like to eat. So there's only one certain kind of milkweed and our greenhouse teacher was able to locate it for us. So then they were so small we ended up putting them in a little container. They're so small. But soon they started to grow and they looked like they had two heads, which is supposed to uh, confuse the predators. My students had to change the leaves every day and we went so far to order t-shirts. And then when they became bigger, we uh, had the shop class build a cage and everything was great. And our first chrysalis appeared on October 5th. But then, unfortunately, that was as far as it went because our monarch started to catch a disease and die. So we certainly didn't see that coming. And so because of this, I don't actually 
recommend that anybody try this in your class because it was quite traumatizing to my students. So the next thing we had done was to order a large milkweed order. And uh, we ordered two 100 packs of milkweed seeds. And we potted them and passed them out to the students. We actually did this during the PLC. So on September 4th, we passed them out to my students. And they started to grow. Though, as far as the success rate, I have my doubts because um, I'm not sure you can trust students to just go out there and plant seeds. So some of them uh, actually left their seeds in their locker and we found quite a few at the end of the school year. So I'm not sure this worked. Um, on Monday, Monday, Monday 4, we watched a webinar from National Habitat, Natural Habitat Adventures. And they actually talked about a trip one can take to three of the four monarch reserves. It was not a cheap trip. Um, this actually would cost a person $3,495 for seven days. But this is not a student trip, so this would be for a photography tour. And in okay, case so then I had posted my project on Skype and a teacher in Delaware, John Chancy, contacted me and um, his project with the students was to plant wildflower gardens. So on September 17th, we actually Skyped into his class and my students spoke to him and uh, they asked us questions and we asked them questions. And this was actually pretty funny because uh, it was a group of third graders and uh, one of uh, their students asked my student um, what we were studying and she said oh we're in Spanish class and so she just started talking to my students in Spanish so that was a surprise. So then uh, this teacher actually sent us a real-time video of a transformation uh, of his uh, monarch a caterpillar into a chrysalis. So that was quite interesting. It occurred in the span of two minutes. So this actually happens very fast. And so his class was more successful at raising their little uh, monarch. Um, I think they had a set of three. So their first monarch actually emerged on September 28th and he had us actually live Skype with his class as they went outside and released their monarch into the wild. So I was very excited and my students were quite excited to uh, witness this. So on Monarch Monday number five, my students created a slideshow of a monarch's migration from Canada to Michoacan, Mexico. So we chose pictures all the way from Canada to Michoacan, to the Monarch Reserve, and we placed a monarch on each slide. On Monarch Monday number six, we actually read in English the 2076 August edition of National Geographic, which featured the discovery of the monarch's migration to Michoacan, Mexico. So I actually found this on uh, eBay and I uh, ordered the National Geographic uh, magazine and we uh, made copies and we uh, read the article and passed the magazine around and it was quite uh, interesting to see that we haven't really gained much knowledge since then about the monarchs except that uh, apparently Dr. Fred Uckard thought that one, <coughs> one specific Butterfly would make it all the way down to Mexico and come back, but it doesn't really work like that. It takes four generations of monarchs to make it down and come back. Also, as you can see from that map, they thought that some of them would go to uh, southern Florida and then cross over to the Yucatan, but that doesn't really work like that because uh, monarchs actually uh, do not like flying over water. So on Monarch Monday number seven, this was our last Monarch Monday, um, we watched the 2015 Nova documentary 
about uh, the journey of the butterflies, which is quite exciting and it's uh, so cute as the children in Mexico uh, witness the arrival of the monarchs uh, and uh, they say, look, there's one coming and uh, it's just quite cute as the monarchs arrive, as they believe uh, that these monarchs actually represent the souls of their ancestors because usually it coincides with their day of the dead. Though last year they were slightly delayed and they arrived on November 3rd, so I'm pretty sure they were quite scared that they weren't going to make it, but they did. So then um, the mathematics of Algebra 1 class created a monarch campaign to plant milkweed everywhere and uh, the algebra teacher had her students make drawings and the winner was this one so it's quite cute and we posted these around the school so then we were able to uh, set up a um, skype talk with dane from the monarch lab at the university of minnesota and the way I found Dane was um, I actually uh, watched a video on YouTube about uh, the Monarch Lab in uh, Minnesota and I was able through the uh, comment box to find uh, a contact and so Dane was more than happy to speak to my class about their efforts to uh, help the Monarch. So Dane actually was in contact with Dr. Pablo Jaramillo from the Monarch Biosphere Reserve in Mexico. So he was able to refer me to him and we were able to speak to Dr. Jaramillo about their efforts uh, on preserving the monarch. And their main focus is on preserving the land and uh, the forests because these uh, that the monarchs are in grave danger of extinction because of illegal logging right in the monarch reserve. And so he told us about uh, soil preservation and soil enrichment, and he told us not to use items that contain transgenics, and I was quite surprised that my students even knew about transgenics, and apparently they had studied this in greenhouse. And he told us that we should use wood products that had these stamps on them because we would know that they are not um, that there were not uh, results of illegal logging. So our final activity was to do a little presentation to second graders in Mexico on November tenth, and uh, my students prepared a little presentation in English on the life cycle of a monarch. And uh, we presented this to a school in Mexico City and it was very cute because they were quite prepared with little question cards and my students were quite knowledgeable by then and they were able to answer all of their questions. So project evaluation, were the goals met? The project certainly was cross-curricular involving several subject areas. The students clearly understood that their actions have a direct impact on their environment. Planting milkweed across Monroe County proved to be a task much more difficult to accomplish than, anticipate, than anticipated. The project was the talk of the school and students did look forward to coming to Spanish class. So I would say that the goals were met. If you feel like you want to help the monarch, um, besides joining the Symbolic Teacher Migration Project, um, you could also join the National Wildlife Federation and um, they certainly help the monarch and if you join they have uh, little gifts that they would uh, pass out. So this one was a free weatherproof blanket. They also offer a cross shoulder bag and different other items. If you'd like to contact me, you can contact me at SpanishTeacherValle at gmail.com.